Hey there, hope you're going well. I'm Jade the Beamer and today I have yet another haul for you. What can I say? Books are too irresistible. I have a whopping 11 books to show you today, plus some notebooks and a couple other nerdy trinkets as usual. So let's get right into it. Starting with the books. try and shop second hand. The books are usually cheaper and it means that we're recycling, books aren't going to waste, they're not getting thrown out, and they're not just sitting on someone's shelf being unread. Because <laughs> we don't have that many unread books, do we? <laughs> so the first book I have to show you is one that I got as a blind date with a book. So it was wrapped up and it had a description on the front and I thought it sounded okay, so I unwrapped it and was pleasantly surprised. I've gotten some books blindly before that I just wasn't interested in, and they usually end up circulating back into donation piles, but this one I was very happy with, and that is Even Cowgirls Get the Blues by Tom Robbins. I haven't heard of this one before, but it was described as feminist with gender representation and sexualities and even disability so it sounds right up my alley and it's about cowgirls i love that <laughs> i haven't read any books about that before i've really been wanting to get into the western genre like books about the old west if you have any recommendations please let me know in the comments down below i'd love to try those out i just don't know where to start super keen about this one the next secondhand book I got is one that I know too much about, and that is Outlander by Diana Galbadon. So I'm pretty sure most of us know what this is. If you don't, it's a historical fiction that's been made into a popular Netflix TV show. I've seen the first four seasons. I got really obsessed with it. I've rewatched it. I just do really adore it. and. I'm really intrigued by it, and it's based on this book, this book series. So Outlander is the first book, and I believe it covers the first season. I'm not too sure how they're split between the TV show. And it's about this woman, Claire, who's on a honeymoon with her husband in Scotland in the 1940s or 50s, and one day she happens to find this circle of stones, and she touches one, and is transported back to the 1700s. So it's all about time travel, and that's where the historical fiction part comes into it. It's full of Scottish history. It's got characters you'll love, characters you'll absolutely despise. And it's all about Claire trying to navigate this new world of the past and her attempts to try and get back to these stones and get back to her husband and her life. Because in the 1700s, things weren't too good for you if you're a woman. This is one of the books I need to read to complete my novelogue, which I'm steadily getting through. Um, so I wanted to pick this one up because of that, because of the TV show. Super keen to see what I think about it. I'm interested in making a review for the first four seasons of Outlander. If you'd like that, please let me know down below and I'll make that for you. So much to talk about. <laughs> The next book I also picked up secondhand because it's a part of my novelogue and I need it to complete that poster, and that is Anna Karenina by Leo Tolstoy, a very classic author. And when I read the description about this one, it didn't strike me as something I would be really obsessed with, but I thought I might as well give it a go. It's very thick, very hefty book has those edges that are like uneven which I think is interesting from what I understand it's about a woman living in Russia obviously in the past and it's about navigating the world of scandal and love and all of that it sounds interesting I hope I give it a go sometime <laughs> in the near future yeah the last secondhand book I got purely because of the cover and because of the title, and that is Tape by Stephen Camden. So the yellow cover drew me in straight away. I don't have that many yellow books and it's just such a bright and interesting colour. 
and it says tape and that made me think it was about music or sound and I really love books that include that. The Bright Siders, just behind me, one of my favourite books, includes that. And my favourite book of all time is just here, The Name of the Wind, and music plays an intrinsic role in that book. So I was keen to see what this one was about. It seems like it's about a love story between two characters and it involves time travel. I'll read you a bit of the back. You could call this a love story. You could call this a time travel story or a story of hope and fate and all the magic of the universe, but to really get it, you just have to read it. So, I am intrigued! If you've read this one, please let me know down below, without spoilers, what you think about it. I'd be interested. The next book I got is another one for the novelogue. It's a very famous classic, and that is Crime and Punishment by, I'm gonna butcher this name, Fyodor Dostoevsky. Dostoevsky. I don't know how to say it, I'm sorry. Meaning to get this one for a while, not only just because of the novelogue, but because it's like such a renowned classic um, and it seems very interesting. I believe it's about a thief who's running away from the law. That's all I know about it, that's all I pretty much need to know. I love the cover of this one, it's like, it's just very, it's not hardback, but it can get away with not being hardback. It's just very beautifully bound very cool i love the inside flaps and just the way it's presented does anyone else find it easier to pick a book up and read it if the cover is like really pleasing and the format is i hope it's not just me again another thick one not too sure when i'm gonna get round to this one but i am keen the next four books i got are also classics they're ones that i am analyzing and the first of those is heart of darkness by joseph conrad I have already read this one, it's like 96 pages long, so I got through it in about a day. Um, very thin. It's a classic, it's about this guy who is retelling the story of his travels in Africa on a steamboat, and he's basically transporting stuff, and it's all about the world that he sees around him, the racism that he sees around him, and it's full of mystery. Now. I will disclaim that I did not like this book. I gave it a 1 out of 5 stars, and I thought that was generous. It's a classic, a lot of people think it's really revolutionary in literature, but I thought it was quite problematic, and overall a bit boring, so that's why I'm not going to be making a book beam about it. Yeah, wasn't a fan of Heart of Darkness. Sorry classic people. The next book is one that I'm currently reading, and that is Candid or Optimism by Voltaire. And I'm a, I've almost finished this one, and I think it's really fun. It's told in that old kind of fairy tale way where the, each of the chapters is like, in this chapter this happens, or this is the chapter wherein he meets this character. And I just think that's so like fairy tale-esque and comedic. It's about this innocent guy. Protagonist Candid had this philosopher teacher called Pangloss, and he basically told him that everything is as it should be. And despite all of the horrible things that Candid and the other characters encounter in this book, he still tries to hang on to this notion of optimism. As the plot continues, we see his philosophies change slightly. He takes on the advice of other characters, and it's all about him trying to figure out why is the world the way it is? Why is it so bad? And what do I do about it? Again, a very short one. Also, I think 96 pages, but this one I would recommend. I will warn you, it does not treat its characters well. There are heavy themes in here, so if you're sensitive to those darker topics, then I wouldn't recommend this one. The next book I picked up is... Orlando by Virginia Woolf, and I think everybody has heard of Virginia Woolf. I haven't read any of her stuff yet. I'm, I'm a bit confused by the premise of Orlando. I'm not too sure if it's a biography of Virginia's life or if it's a fictional tale. I believe it deals with gender and the fluidity between gender. I'll read a bit from the back. First masculine, then feminine, Orlando begins life as, as a young 16th century nobleman, then gallops through the centuries to end up as a woman writer in Virginia Woolf's old, own time. Ah, oh, so it seems like it's 
a parody biography where she kind of includes herself in her novel and that's cool Orlando is gender fluid or trans that's so cool I'm excited to get into this one is it perhaps linked to Shakespeare's play as you like it I've read that one and there is a character called Orlando and that play mucks around with the concepts of gender and romance and everything I wonder if they're linked the last classic book I'm hauling today is Incidents in the Life of a Slave Girl by Harriet Jacobs. Again, this is a very thin classic. I think this one um, is 160-ish pages. The pages are a bit thinner in this one, but it sounds like such an important read and this is going to be my next read after Candid or Optimism. Candid, Candide, I don't know how to pronounce that. And this is so powerful, so important because it's a true story. It's a memoir set in the 1800s by Harriet and it's all about her life living under a cruel master. It's all about the degradation that slaves faced in America and it seems like a very important part of history and recognising the struggles that black people have gone through. Incidents in the Life of a Slave Girl remains among the few extant slave narratives written by a woman. Very important stuff excited to get into this one and to learn more. The next two books kind of step out of what I usually read and that's why I picked them up. The next book I'm hauling today is Overstory by Richard Powers. I'm picking this one up because I saw someone else reading it and they recommended it and they read out the first page to me and it just hooked me straight away. It seemed really poetic and something that I wouldn't have encountered before. I'm going to read a bit for you now because that's how it was introduced to me. Let me know what you think. First there was nothing. Then there was everything. Then in a park above a western city after dusk, the air is raining messages. A woman sits on the ground, leaning against a pine. Its bark presses hard against her back, as hard as life. Its needles scent the air and a force hums in the heart of the wood, her ears tuned down to the lowest frequencies. The tree is saying things in words before words. I don't know about you, but that sounds pretty freaking cool to me. I have not read a book about trees before and I love nature. I love trees and this sounds so cool. Trees having history and trying to speak. And apparently it's good because it's won an award. So I am so keen to try this one out. It seems very different to what I usually read and that's fine with me. This is the story of five other strangers, each summoned in different ways by the natural world, who are brought together in a last stand to save it from catastrophe. It seems like this book is a collection of stories centered in the same world, but they all come together and they're all linked by trees in some way. And it just seems really cool. The writing style seems really interesting. Keen to get into this one. We got a brown spine, very nice. The last book I'm hauling today is a graphic novel and at the start of the year in my TBR I said that I'd like to get more graphic novels so that I can read them and experience that different genre and way of storytelling so that's what I did, I picked up one and that graphic novel is The Sepolis by Majane Strzoglapi I'm sorry if I mispronounced that I've heard a lot of people talk about this one apparently it's a very famous graphic novel and so it intrigues me it has a very definitive art style. It kind of reminds me of the illustrator from Horrible History books. I don't know if that's just me or not. So it takes place in Iran and it's very tied into that the history of that country, the social life and the convolutions between home and public. I haven't read a book before about Iran and I'd be really interested to learn more about that country and culture. And a graphic novel just seems like a really interesting way to do that. Seems very cool, very important. Keen to get into this graphic novel. We move on to the next section of the haul, which is notebooks. I've got seven notebooks to show you today, so let's get into it. I kind of wanted to switch up the sizes of the notebooks I got. So I got two A5 ones. I got this one, which has like a record vinyl being made on the front, which is very cool. And I think it's super useful because it's got dividers in between where you can put stuff into and it has like those sections to break it up. So I think it'd be a cool notebook to use. 
And the next notebook is of a similar format, and it's this one, which says Stay Wild Sister on the front. It's got those dividers again, and it just is a cool little notebook. The rest of the notebooks are A4 size, and the first one I'm going to show you is very similar to the little A5 one, and it says we're just making life up as we go along. It's got that nature flower theme of the one I just showed you, and it has the dividers, but again, this is a big A4 size, so I think it'll just be very useful. And this one has, again, the same format, and it says thoughts and feelings, and I thought the... I thought this pattern was very cool and again it's got the dividers. I've already started using this one, very handy. The last three notebooks are again A4 size but they don't have the dividers like the other ones. They're a bit thinner. The first one I picked up because I thought the cover was funny and it says welcome to a positive state of mind. So it's like instead of welcome to the state of blah 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 it's positivity which is always nice. The snow faces creep me out a little bit but we can get past that. So yeah, it's just a little thin notebook. Honestly, I don't know why I keep buying notebooks when I have so many blank ones that I need to use. But one of my resolutions for this year was to start using my notebooks for different things, and I have been, so I feel like that gives me a little bit of leniency to get some more. <laughs> Keeping those nature vibes strong today. The next notebook has plant hoarder on the front, and I just thought it was like such a nice, simple design. I love the yellow. I think it'll be a cool little notebook to use. And the last notebook I have to show you today is this one. And I just thought it was really cool. I like the bold colours and I guess that matches the bold themes on here. Just protesters for equal rights and the environment, which I think are very important topics. So important stuff is going to go in here and I think that's really cool. Something I will say about notebooks is that I don't like the spirals on the left hand side. If you're a lefty, you might know what I mean. It's just very hard to get your hand into that corner when the spiral's in the way. It can be very annoying, but I'm getting past that. Just a thought, <laughs> just a random lefty pet peeve. <laughs> what are some struggles you face as a lefty? Let me know. <laughs> Moving on to the nerdy trinkets. The first one I have to show you is a bookmark. It's made out of this nice kind of wood material. It's very thin and very nice. It has this cute owl on it with a book and it says, whenever you read a good book, somewhere in the world, a door opens to allow in more light. And it, that quote is by Vera Naz Nazarian. I hope I'm pronouncing that right, but I just thought it was a cute little bookmark and it has a nice material, good vibes. This next thing is probably the weirdest thing I've ever hauled, so <laughs> so me and my partner kind of have this ritual where when we go out to a gaming shop, we get each other something random, a gift that we think the other one will like, mainly in the form of models for Dungeons and Dragons. And this isn't necessarily a model for Dungeons and Dragons, but it's a cool model that he thought I would like, so, you know, there's that. Again, very weird, but I ended up painting it, and the model is this. It's a wear armadillo, and I painted it. I hope it- I think it came out okay. Not too sure what the expectations for painting a wear armadillo are, but yeah, I do appreciate that this figure is like quite hefty. It's quite solid and thick, so it made it easier to paint, and I just think it's a cool style. I will admit, the hands of the wear armadillo freak me out. And I don't really know what the ramifications of using this will be. I don't I don't really know how wear armadillos will fit into my life, but there we go. I have a new DD figurine. Coming up to the end of the haul, the last two things I have to show you are based around one of my favourite things on the planet, which is anime! <laughs> So the first thing I picked up is from my favourite studio Ghibli movie. I'll give you five seconds to guess what that is in the comments below. No cheating. Five, four, three, two, one. Kiki's Delivery Service. It's my favourite studio Ghibli movie, one of my favourite anime movies, and it's a little sticker. And I just thought that was really cute. I like the design of Kiki and the bread. I just think it's a cute little way to remember my favourite anime movie, Studio Ghibli. There we go. <laughs> 
And the last thing I am hauling for you that is anime themed is this badge from Haikyuu, the volleyball phenomena in anime. It made me want to play sport, it made me interested in sport. It's important, what else could I say? One of my favourite anime of all time now. I made a full video review on the first two seasons. I'll leave a link in the description below if you're interested. Very fun to talk about. And I just couldn't walk away from this Shoyo Hinata badge. It has, you know, our protagonist on the front. It has a cool volleyball design in the background. And I'm going to pin it on my bag and people will know when they see it that I am a hardcore fan, okay? <laughs> and now comes the end of the haul. If you've stuck around, thank you so much. It means a lot. Really love all of the things I haul today. Very grateful. If you have any of these things, please let me know. If you've read any of the books, what are your thoughts? Do you have a notebook hoarding problem like me? Do you play Dungeons and Dragons? And what's your favourite anime? Please let me know in the comments below. Here are all of my socials. I'm on Instagram, Goodreads and Twitter. Really appreciate if you could reach out to me. I'd love to discuss with you. Everything will be linked in the description below. Which reminds me, are you subscribed? If not, there's a convenient way to fix that. <laughs> Please click that red subscribe button down below, it means so much. And it means that we can keep talking about pop culture goodness in the future, which is amazing. If you enjoyed this haul, feel free to slap that like button down below. And again, thank you so much for joining me. Take care and I'll catch you next time, fellow trinket lovers. Goodbye!